They gon' need a couple of my thoughts, man. Thoughts, man. They don't ask me for my drinks too often. Often. Gotta give them something to keep them talking. Talkin'. But what they do not know is I'm a boss. My two cents, I got them. My two cents, I give them. My two cents, don't doubt them. My two cents, it's real. My two cents, I got them. My two cents, I give them. My two cents, don't doubt them. My two cents, it's real. You ain't asses for it, but we give it anyway. Show. This the real two cents show. Go get them, Lady J. Welcome to The Real Two Cents. You didn't ask us for it, but we give it to you anyway. Real topics discussed by real people who give their real two cents. And I'm your host, Lady J. And today's guest is Trosh. I'll say, no, nah, I ain't gonna tell me your real name. You can tell me your real name, okay? No, I'm, I'm <laughs> Our topic is cancel culture. But before we get into it, go ahead, Trosh. I call him Trosh, because um, I don't know if he wants y'all to know his government name. So if he does, he can say it. You know, go ahead, introduce yourself. Tell the people about yourself. Uh, man, look, I'm Trosh. Um, I, I'm a podcaster. Uh, I'm co-host of Fat Girl Chronicles podcast. Uh, I'm the host of Between the Lines, the radio show. That's a podcast, too. They both on JQLM Radio. Uh, and I'm also the director of Hip Hop and R&B for JQLM Radio. So, yeah, I'm out here doing this. <laughs> All right, so um, let's just hop into the topic because me and you have talked about this a little bit you know, before the show. Mm -hmm. So cancel culture. So typically that's something that we as African-Americans do and have, I won't say started recently, but I will say that it has been more prominent here in these recent, mm, let's say six years or so, right. especially when Trump hit the scene. Mm -hmm. So to you, tell me what cancel culture really is. What does it entail? Uh, to me, I feel like it's a ruin, a reckoning of somebody. You know what I'm saying? Like, like if anybody does anything that somebody don't like, now you want to like mess up their whole livelihood, and I, I just can't get on board with that. You know, like, like I, th I feel like it's necessary in some instances, but not all of them. Like it's it's very saturated now, where anybody could get canceled for anything. Hey, anybody can get it. <laughs> Okay, so that was going to be my next question. So when is it necessary? But if we look at cancel culture, though, canceling people who do not, I won't say fit the narrative of what the majority likes, but I will say usually when people are canceled is because uh, their actions or words um, negatively affect us as a whole. And when they do so with no remorse and uh, don't feel any type of way about um the negative, you know, emotions behind it or the trauma that may ensue behind mm -hmm. it culturally because we are a traumatized people, you know, mm -hmm. in, in America. We, we are a... Um, we are a traumatized people as a whole and we've endured a lot. And so when people... I think when people tend to do things that add to that, I think that's why we decided that we have to stop turning the cheek. I think that's one way we exercise stop turning you know both chicks are just taking it so i think that it is necessary sometimes i i don't necessarily agree with as a whole because i feel like it's certain groups of people that only like zone in on the one issue it only it only affect the one person then like or not the one person but the one group and then mm -hmm. um they call for the cancel of the individual who did who made mm -hmm. it feel personal to them you okay. know what i'm saying and and, and that group so I, I wouldn't I wouldn't say as a whole. So let's talk about when when it's necessary. So for instance, um, so there's a difference between canceling a uh, organization and or a person or a group. So let's talk about uh, Chrisette Michelle for instance. She been canceled at the you know when Trump first came on. I mean everybody was going hard for her music. I love Chrisette Michelle, but. Um, a lot of us could recognize Trump for who he was. It's, mm -hmm. It was on um, many uh, news stations. Uh, recordings have been played back of him uh, with the, the five young men, I think, in Chicago that were um, wrongly accused um, of murder. And he said that he would pay for the execution. You know, he, he said that they were guilty. He's been on on camera, on audio, um, you know, uh, as a racist. Mm -hmm. So the people that he aligns himself with is racist, not, um, 
renting to black people, you know, in Trump Towers and things of that sort. And so we already knew the type of person that he was. So while we participated in getting him into office by not going out to vote, we also decided to tell those people like Chrisette Michelle and everybody else who thought that was going to be the bridge, knowing that that wasn't going to work, to go in and accept, you know, his invitation to basically use them to say, well, hey, I called on a black person, mm -hmm. you know, to come and perform, so I'm not racist. Well, you know, and we kept trying to tell her she wouldn't listen. So meanwhile, all of her counterparts backed out. But instead, she went ahead with it. And now, she, you know, then after the fact, after she was canceled, you know, she wanted to get on social media and cry about it and say how, you know, traumatizing it was and it wasn't fair. But if the people were telling you you know, beforehand, how negatively this affects us and you're, you are not helping the situation. Did you, do you not feel like that was warranted her being canceling canceled? I'm sorry. So I'm all for canceling anybody that's that like speak hate that that's the number one thing. I don't, I don't care who you are. If hate is your thing that you stand on, get out of here. You know what I'm saying? Like, but the whole thing with Chris and Michelle is like, somebody got to try. You know what I'm saying? Somebody got to try. And that's all she was doing. She was trying. It didn't work, but she tried. Somebody got to try. Like, you can't just say, like, oh, some got to change, some got to change, and nobody tried to make the change. That's that's why I, I just, I couldn't cancel her for that. I think that there's um, something to be said about the way we go about things, about being, see, we have to be strategic about how we go about things. Going to perform for somebody is not going to change the narrative. So and when you get people into legislation and things of that sort, into rooms, having conversations with people that may change the narrative or with people that would be in, would be in, I'll say, uh, some type, sort of close relationship to Trump, mm -hmm. then that's a difference. But going to allow him to use you you know what I'm saying? As a face, just like he did with the Bible, for instance, with upside down <laughs> Bible to take a picture in front of, you know, the church and, you know, the church felt some type of way about that too, because they know when it's a photo op or opportunity, mm -hmm. that's what we were trying to get her to understand. She didn't want to listen. So I feel like you can't then try to spin it as if that was going to make a you know, a difference because it, it wasn't, we already knew that when Trump doesn't, I mean, heck he came from a, he came from a show where he loved the words you're fired, yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah. So the moment that people go against what he wants or what he believes, what does he do? He lets them go. He fires them even in the white house. I mean, they let him run rampant. We could see this. We knew what his character was. So I, me personally, I feel like, it was warranted because there was nothing that was going to come of you going to perform for him. Basically kind of like, uh, some people call it that equivalent to, you know, calling the light, uh, the lighthouse niggas and, you know, to the slight, to the slave master's mm -hmm. house to come and perform that that's what the equivalent was to that. So what do you have to say about that? I, I still, I still feel like somebody got to try, you know, like, um, like you saying, like oh, uh, singing for somebody not gonna like uh, fix everything, but I think it was the the symbol of her doing that with him, like for the country to reunite the country. That's what I feel like it was like. I don't think it was like oh, I'm finna just go sing for Trump, like like she was singing for my man's like one on one. <laughs> okay, and so knowing what the outcome was though, that absolutely nothing came of it. Yeah. I mean, uh, then I mean, yeah. I don't know. I mean, that that's that's a that's a hard pill to swallow, though. You know what I'm saying? Everybody know what Trump is. Everybody know what Trump was, because like even before he got in office, we knew what he was, and he still got in there. So like, what that just tell you what his country at? Yeah. So, I mean, and, and, but hey. you know, and like I said, a lot of that too um, was on us because we didn't go out to vote. Oh, but we showed up this time. And when we show up, we know what can happen, you know? So I, I just think that it is necessary in some instances that I say, I would say that particular situation, Chrisette Michelle, her being canceled. Um, I can see your side. I can see, you know, for those of you who think like you, but I was always taught that you learn from the mistakes of others. 
So if you know that that wasn't going to work and people try to tell you, you can't then enter into it and say you didn't know or you tried because you were already forewarned. So there's warning before destruction. At the same time, just think about you growing up, your parents told you don't do all this stuff because they did it. You still got to experience it for yourself. Like, it, like your parents could raise you and tell you, like, oh, I did all this when I was a kid or whatever, and this is what happened. You you still got to get out there and learn for yourself sometime. Like, That's yeah, you true. You can't tell me that you didn't make the same mistakes that your parents made. That's true. Not all of them, but some of them, yes, I will say. Um, I And as you grow and evolve, though, and as you get older, you learn that it's more beneficial for you if you learn from the mistakes of others. It doesn't make sense to watch you go and jump off a cliff and break your neck and then me go and jump off a cliff and break my neck when I know that that's going to be the end result. That would just be stupid. You know what I'm saying? Um, So uh, go to the end of the cliff, you know, I can look, but if I jump and thinking I'm going to, you know, jump in the water and live, no, you know what I'm saying? It It doesn't make sense. I mean, some things you ought to, you ought to learn from the mistakes. It makes no sense to watch people make mistakes and know what the outcome is. And then you go right behind and do the exact same thing. I mean, but at the same time, you could just, you got to think about it like this. Like a failure is just you learning another way not to do it. You would have never knew that that wouldn't go work until she did it and it didn't work. <laughs> well, okay. That's, that's fair. That's fair. So another, uh, I'll say this one is an organization. Netflix. It was unsuccessful. So, you know, when Monique <laughs> had an issue, you know, uh, with Netflix not paying her what she felt like she deserved and, and black uh, female comics anyway, you know, she tried to get everybody to cancel Netflix. And of course, we wasn't going for it. You know, the majority of us wasn't going for it. So what do you think about um, or an organization being canceled? Is it ever necessary for an organization to be canceled? I feel like it's it's whatever, like the... The, the narrative around the organization is. You know what I'm saying? Like, like Monique was calling for cancellation for, like, a reason that was not... No, that, no you're not... That's not a good reason right there. Be, like, they are, what have you done for me lately? And Monique hadn't done anything lately. So why would they pay you all this money if you ain't got nothing out? Okay, yeah, I can see that. I can see that. So, um, in... When it comes to organizations, then... It, it depends on the narrative, is mm-hmm. what you're saying. Okay, and who determines what's a good reason, who's not a good, what's not a good reason? Oh uh, man, that that's a good question you, right you, there. That's, that was a statement that you said. That's a good question <laughs> right there. But I'm saying, like, like I told you, like it's certain groups that take certain things to heart more than other groups. So that's the person that that's the the thing that controls who's the, what's the narrative, what the narrative is. So hey, uh, man, look. That's that's a hard question right there, cause you never know, you never know. I could do anything right now, and one of y'all in the room could be like, "Man, what the hell?" You know what I'm saying? Like, but that's just personal to you, right? You see what right. I'm saying? Right. Okay. So, who should be canceled? What what should warrant someone being canceled in cancel culture? Because here recently, um, uh, uh, let me just say, <laughs> in the camera, I was Team Kirk Franklin. Okay. <laughs> Uh, so Kirk Franklin, oh, oh, they recently 100%. tried to cancel him because of how he, um, for those of you who don't know, um, Kirk Franklin and his son had a conversation on the phone and Kirk Franklin completely cussed his son out and, but his son is grown and, uh, his son has caused issues and been dealing with some demons for a very long time. And Kirk had never put him out, has, has always tried, you know, to be there and, unbeknownst to him his son was recording just to put put it out there that's the only reason you're gonna record anyway yeah, so you was sure. trying to you was trying to destroy your father and for me i'm team kirk any child that i bring into this world um you're going to honor and respect me i don't care how old you are and when you disrespect me then you get what's coming to you period um and i feel like his son uh wasn't entitled you know and kirk franklin has said that too you feel entitled because you have a father who was in the spotlight. You know what I'm saying? You was raised in money and, and all, you know, and fame and all this other kind of stuff. And I think that we as a people, I think society has conditioned us to where we should uh, shun or shame people who, I'll say, who discipline their kids in a way that now society says is traumatic or abusive. 
everything's soft now. Exactly. Everything's soft now. Um, and I think I was talking to, I was talking to somebody earlier just about like how everything is so, so sterilized and watered down. And, yeah, watered down and um, like like oh, I was talking about with the COVID thing, um, how like people with immune systems like that people that didn't get sick that's because their immune system stronger because like oh everything wasn't so clean there wasn't no hand sanitizer when we was growing up there wasn't no <laughs> hand sanitizer that's new basically you know like so now like when people come into contact with something now your body can't defend it and stuff like mm-hmm. that you know so that's the same thing as far as disciplining your kids and, and uh and you raising them like i the one thing i always hated was like oh this the state's kids what do you mean the state? Like this, this mom live in the house with me. The state right. don't raise my kid. Like right, the right. state's kids. You can just take my kid because you feel like it. No, right, make it out of here. You're right. I think that um, when we start trying to cancel people over how they parent, if it if it's not because let's be honest, there is no thin line between being abusive and disciplining your kids. You know what what abuse is. Yeah, you know what sure. I'm saying. You know what abuse abuse is clear. You know what I'm saying and. I think for those people who have the mindset now that you shouldn't physically, you know, discipline your kids, it teaches them, uh, it teaches them, you know, how to be violent towards others and all this other kind of stuff. Uh, to me, bullshit. <laughs> you know, so because here's the thing: there was a study done a couple years ago that AM thirteen ten put on um, the radio where they uh, survey a hundred. Uh, I'll say kids, I think most of them were African-American who were uh, physically um, disciplined as kids and then ones who weren't. 95% of those kids who were physically disciplined in the household had never been to jail. They clearly weren't in an early grave. You know what I'm saying? And for the most part, they finished uh, school um, and entered into uh, the workforce. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think they said like between 75 to 85 percent of kids that were not had all been (laughs) in the system, either at a very young age or as they got older and things of that sort. And I think that what people fail to realize is putting your kid in a timeout is not uh, a good enough, I'll say, discipline um, or disciplinary action if they go and steal something from a candy store. The the. the discipline has to match the offense mm-hmm. because if, if boundaries aren't set when you get older, your consequences become much more dire, they become much more worse. And if you're an adult with an entitled mindset, that can lead to some serious issues like being someone who is um, verbally or physically abusive to a spouse, you know what I'm saying? Or a significant other, um, someone who in, enters into high crime and things of that sort. So I think that w- we as parents uh, or as, you know, a culture also need to stop allowing society to write our story and change our narrative. Absolutely. Um, And I, I, I I think like this all the time, uh, like us, we got discipline. We good. Like Mm -hmm. if you see these little, the the new generation, this, that's the undisciplined generation. They, they snapping. (laughs) Yeah, they got a control. They snapping. I don't understand what's going on. They doing everything. I don't know if it's just because social media, you can see it more, but I don't think so. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I, I don't think we was like that. No, we, no. listen, we weren't because it, we knew that we represented our parents. And I'm not saying that our generation was perfect. Even the generation before us, we knew that Miss uh, Sally across the street or, or or Mr. Tim down the street, if they saw us cutting up or doing something, they was going to check us and then call our mama or grandma, whoever we live with, auntie, uncle, and tell them what we was doing. And when we got home, we was going to get it too. That's, that's a couple times. Exactly. But I think now we don't even engage with one another to get to know the people that we live with and around us. Because so, see, the first thing you want to do is you want somebody to jump in if your kid is going to get hit by a car or something mm-hmm. like that. But the moment that I see your child being out of order, mm-hmm. you don't want me to say something to them. You know what I'm saying? And it, it just don't work that way. So I think with with Kirk Franklin and his situation, one, his child is grown. He's a grown man. You know what I'm saying? And I think that the way he went about that and what he did made him look bad. It didn't make Kirk Franklin look bad. It made you look bad because now your mess and what your family has been dealing with is now on the table. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And so I think that, again, we, we have to stop allowing society to... Um, to make us these 
um, I, I'll say these people that are tolerant of everything. I just feel like they want us to tolerate everything and no, everything cannot be tolerated. Cause see, you can't in one hand, I'll be on the news portraying us as these thugs and, and you know what I'm saying? Just acting crazy and wild kids and heathens. But at the same time, you over here trying to, you know, tell us what we can and can't do as far as discipline. You know, because I'm tell I'll be the first one to tell you. Look, CPS has been in my house a couple times before, and I do not care unless you <laughs> gonna come and raise my kids and feed them and clothe them and stuff like that. You 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 might as well get ready to lock me up every time you come. Which they not gonna do. Exactly. Gonna take your kid and give it to somebody else exactly. for them to do it. Exactly. You act like you, you act like you taking them on and you keeping exactly. them all. No, don't don't tell me my kid is your kid. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. So. Um, when somebody is canceled, how long do you think that should last? So, cause Chris Jack, Michelle has been canceled the, since what? 20, what's it? 2021? Let's see. Got it since 2016? Is it 2016? I don't even keep up with dudes, so I don't know. No, 2018. No, it was 20. No, it no, it was 2018. Life. Wasn't it? 2018. She been canceled for a minute. So, cause for the whole time that Trump was in office, from the time he got in to up until now, she's been canceled. So it's been what? Four years? Three years? I feel like it's the offense, though, you know, like it, what you do, like some stuff you shouldn't be able to come back from. Like, uh, like I say, hate, uh, murder, rapist, you know, what I'm saying? all that stuff. You shouldn't be able to come back from that. But like what she did, she should be good right at this point. They that, that, that's just stupid. That's stupid. OK, so I think that we should all allow people a chance to be redeemed at some point. Because all of us are ex something. If you've changed, that point, that part, yes. Now I'm, I'm not saying that you get to. That, that's why I said be have a chance to be redeemed. Because you can't be redeemed if you are still the same or, and doing the same stuff that got you canceled in the first place. <laughs> you know that just it don't work that way. I don't ever want to see Trump again. So you can, yeah. you, hey, you, <laughs> hey. You, so you let's give him another that, chance if you want to. No, no, not him. I mean, because we already know who he is, and he's not going to change. So he, you know what I'm saying? That's not somebody that going to be written. There are people who are set in their ways. So um, I'll say what alternatives then can we use um, in light of canceling somebody? So because you feel like, you know, Chris and Michelle shouldn't have, been can shouldn't have been canceled. We're just using her, of course, as an example of someone who was – Completely. I mean, immediately they was on, they, they went in and just completely cut her off. I mean, her CD sales dropped, mm -hmm. you know, uh, her scheduled um, performances you know, were no longer booked. Right. <laughs> so, uh, but you have someone like Leandria Johnson who was pulled or removed from one of the award shows when she made a, a, a comment, you know, and she had some. Uh, a few, you know, emotional meltdowns in front of the camera. And let me just say, I'm, I've always been a Leandria Johnson fan. I, I know what it's like to struggle, you know what I'm saying? Emotionally and mentally and be real about it, you know, and still love God and, and, and tell your truth and could care less about what other people think. So, um, she was somebody too, who was canceled in a way, you know what I'm saying? But we watched her, her come back from where she was. So it wasn't as, as bad. Um, so what alternatives then can be used in regards to canceling people? Uh, I'm going to touch on the first thing you was talking about first, uh, because that probably, like you said, she got like back issues. Then people recognize that. Mm -hmm. But the Chris and Michelle thing, like it wasn't no backstory with that. You just made a decision. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So like, hey, you got to deal with it, even though I feel like it was too harsh because she was just trying. You know, but uh -huh. um, I haven't really gave any thought to alternatives, though, you know, like, because I feel like some people do need to be canceled. Okay. I do. But what what kind of alternatives are there, though, like, when you think about it? like. So, I mean, maybe implementing something like a probation, you know? I mean... You know, you, you you got this amount of time to get you, you know what I'm saying, to, to I mean, get your, your well, head who, on who right. Who makes those rules, though? You see uh, what I'm saying? The same people who canceled. I mean, let's be honest. We all canceled it. We, our, the stuff with R. Kelly, too. He got canceled. And a lot of radio stations stopped playing his music. Mm -hmm. We pulled all his music, too, of course. Um, you have uh, even local people, uh, you know, who, who've been canceled here in, here in Indy. I mean, you know, you're pulling people's records or, you know, uh, taking, you know, if you're featured on magazines or retracting, you know, news stories and things of that sort. I mean, 
we all played a role in that in canceling people. So I'm saying if you give if you give them a probation, I feel like it's gonna be a million people like, no, that ain't long enough for it. No, that was too long. You know what I'm saying? Nobody's gonna come to agreement on what a, a good probation time is. Like that's that's hard. That's gonna be hard to gauge. Could it possibly be a partial cancellation like Leandria? Like you saying, be able to let her come back or let them come back? It depends on the offense. Okay. All right. So if you ain't out here a serial killer and raping people and you know what I'm saying like like hate. I feel like any everybody should be able to you know what I'm saying like be redeemed. Okay. All right. So, uh, and and I can agree with that. I can agree with that. Like I said, we all are ex somebody. But the question is, um, have we grown from that time that we committed the offense? So, um, all right. So we only have a few minutes left in the show. So you want to tell everybody anything you got coming up or how they can follow you and contact you? Yeah. Um, you can follow me on all social media platforms at it's Troche. That's I T S T R O C H E. Uh, catch me on the Fat Girl Chronicles on Tuesday, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And also between the lines Wednesday, seven, uh, five p- 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that be throwing me off, man, because you know I, I live in Chicago, so I got to, uh, you know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> hey, it be, it be swinging me every time. Oh, that's all right. So if you could leave everybody with at least something that they can take away from this conversation, um, what would that be in regards to cancel culture? Like, what would you like to see? The The thing that, I say a, a lot of times, like everything ain't cookie cutter. Like, like society is running everything when you you can't let society run you. you know what I'm saying you gotta live for you. You can't live for what these people think you think of you. You know what I'm saying? Like, hey, you just gotta live your life like you gonna live your life, and whatever the consequences is to what you do, then hey, you eat that. But don't try to live your life around these people's opinions. Mm-hmm. Okay. I I would say to always strive to be a better you. If you are the same person today that you were five years ago, that's a problem. Like everybody should be striving to um, evolve. The moment that you feel like nobody can tell you something, the moment you feel like you cannot learn from somebody else, the moment you are no longer teachable or culture or, or coachable, excuse me, um, then you have reached your limit in life. So uh, that's all I have to say on that topic. Thanks, Troth, for being my guest today. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. And this has been another episode of The Real Two Cents with your girl, Lady J. You didn't ask us for it, but we gave it to you anyway.